people's thirst for information is, is endless. Um, and you as a leader think that you'll, you've communicated uh, what people need to know to be able to effectively do their jobs. But I find even myself it's not enough for them. You have to keep um, feeding that information chain really and finding different ways of, of communicating. Yeah. The person I've seen who probably exemplifies that is Peter Hughes. Yeah. He is really a warm leader and he knows everyone, he knows, you know, what it, and he can talk to anyone. Yeah. You know, he can sit down in the room and make anyone feel comfortable. Because he has those very nice conversations when he has to say something tough, he can. Mm, yeah. And it doesn't elicit defensive mm. behavior. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's a really interesting dynamic to watch, mm. right? It's about sitting down with somebody and telling them the truth mm. in a clear, objective way. No emotion, no anger, no, none of, no frustration, none of that. Just simply telling them the truth. Feedback is the most powerful thing you can do for another human being and often we don't do it or we don't do it well and that is incredibly disempowering. So talk about that notional ministers meeting. We're walking back to your office. I'm your staff member. Mm. I really have screwed something up mm. quite badly to the extent that yep. I've sort of damaged the trust that you've built up with the minister. Yep. What do you say to me? So I say, oh, well, Debbie, how did you think that went? So, you know. Give me a chance to. Give yeah. you a chance, yeah. Um, and they'll always ask you how you think it went. You just tell them the truth. Um, tend not to do it in the moment. If uh, I'm feeling frustrated or a, a little bit angry, I tend to put it, you know, and make a, it needs to be objective. Mm. I mean, it's like giving positive feedback. Mm. It needs to be, it needs to cover all the same points, specific, immediate, personal. Yeah. Yep. The person needs to know what it is that they didn't do right, that they need to improve next time and how they need to improve it. Uh, and try and do it in a way where the person feels like you're backing them to win. You know, you're not. This is not the start of some big conspiracy to get rid of you. Actually, Peter's there, he's got my back, he's backing me to win, he's telling me this because he wants me to succeed. Mm. Uh, and good on him for being honest, I can do something with this, mm. I can improve. I think a, a reframing of performance management would be helpful. Mm. Um, again, a generalisation. Currently, performance management tends to be seen as something that's pulled out in moments of slight um, desperation sometimes when, mm. when things aren't working as well. Uh, the formal, rather than performance management being seen as an end-to-end building on strengths as well as the plugging the caps. Yeah. Um, so my view is that um, yeah, people say, oh, so-and-so's under performance management, and they're meaning it in a sort of a corrective mm. last ditch sense, rather than it being exactly that end-to-end -end enabling a standard business process, um, regular review, feedback, our data and our anecdotal data is that those, you know, regular feedback development conversations are less common than more common. How to get those just as a matter of course, I think is a, you know, it's a culture shift for the public service.